Hello, good evening and welcome to News at 10, live from our news hub here at Adesawa in Accra. This is our final news bulletin for the day. My name is Pa Yasari. First, the local news highlights. Three persons have been arrested on suspicion of possession of firearms and ammunition are led to be targeting the presidency have been charged with five counts. This include conspiracy to manufacture arms and ammunition without lawful authority and possession of explosives and firearms without lawful excuse. Also tonight, 22 deportees from Germany and the United Kingdom have been received by the Kotoka International Airport Regional Command. 17 of the Ghanaian deportees arrived from Germany on board a chartered flight. While the deportees, all males aged between 21 to 60 years, were escorted by 67 police officers, including uh, paramedics. They were deported for immigration-related issues such as overstaying their entry permit and illegal stay. Now, the Ghana Health Service has deployed medication to communities in the Northeast region where Scabus outbreak has left hundreds of people, mostly women and children, with severe skin rashes and severe itching. At, at least 14 communities in the newly created region have for the past month been battling the strange skin disease, which they initially claimed was a punishment from the gods until the sampled blood test proved positive for Scabus. Also tonight, the Josephine Group of Companies says it has full confidence in the power of the judiciary to deliver justice. The management of Josephine Group described government's recent shutdown of the great consolidated Diamonds Ghana Limited over contract breaches as unlawful. Head of communications for the Josephine Group, Sophia Lisa, says they are shocked by the latest twist of events. The Coalition of Civil Society Organizations Against Political Vigilantism has given government a weak ultimatum to change its position on its white paper on the Yawas West Wagon by election violence. The coalition says government's decision to reject some of the recommendations of the ML Short Commission report is practically flawed and could be a recipe for disaster, particularly in the upcoming 2020 general elections. Also, we've got highlights from the international front. And formal impeachment inquiry into President Trump is to be launched by Democrats in Congress. This comes as President Donald Trump said on Tuesday he, he has uh, authorized the release of a transcript of his phone call with Ukraine's president. The call is at the center of a growing controversy over whether he sought foreign help in smearing a political rival. Also tonight, the UK Supreme Court ruled on Tuesday that Boris Johnson's decision to shut down Parliament in the run-up to Brexit was unlawful. However, a defiant Prime Minister said he disagreed and vowed that Britain will leave the EU by October 31, come what may. Elsewhere, researchers from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change have been meeting in Monaco to finalise a report on the seas and the chrysphere. Uh, it will be the clearest declaration yet on how an overheating world is hammering our oceans and frozen regions. Released on Wednesday, it will show how the oceans have been a friend, helping us cope with rising temperatures. And elsewhere, a fuel tanker exploded during a traffic accident in the center of Mali's capital, Bamako, on Tuesday, killing six people and badly wounding 46 others. An eyewitness said the tanker served out of the way of a motorcycle, lost control, crashed on its side and exploded. Well, that's all for international headlines. We'll start off with a big one. And we begin from the Asante, Ashanti regional capital, Kumase, and the Asante Hino Tumfo said Sula II had a rousing welcome at the Kumase airport upon his return from the U.S. days after dominating media headlines over his speech at the United Nations. Now, various youth groups in the Ashanti kingdom, as well as a number of chiefs, politicians and heads of security agencies were at the airport to welcome the Asante Hene. Among the high-profile personalities to welcome the Asante Hene were Mampong Hene Dasebre Osei Bonso, 
the second in the Ashanti Regional Minister, uh, Simon Osei Mensah. The Ashanti Hene has been away in the U.S. for high-profile engagement, uh, including an ad address to the U.N. General Assembly on using traditional methods and culture to engender peace. While well, his comments on counseling a losing candidate in the 2016 general elections during his speech dominated social and political discussions in Ghana, the security personnel had a tough time controlling the crowd. As Antonio Tunfo said to the second, was later taken through some principal streets of the city in a convoy to announce his arrival. Meanwhile, people who trooped to the airport to welcome their Sahitehene touted the Tumfo's visionary leadership, which has brought peace and development in the country. A momentous moment for the people of this country, particularly the Santiman people, that you have a king that throughout the world is among the few kings who get the opportunity at the world stage. There's no doubt whatsoever about the important role Nana Otunfua Satene has played in our body politics beyond just ensuring that there's peaceful elections before, during and after. He has also contributed immensely in the education, economy and environment of our country. And then the as has always been in Ashanti reading here, when you come to Menshia, there's no difference. We see everybody, whichever tribe, whichever party, all come together and we all worship our king, Mutunfo um, the II. The same thing happens here. We see everybody is happy. Away from that, a group calling it itself Fix Abandoned Volta Roads. In collaboration with the youth of South Dye District on Thursday, blocked the Eastern Corridor Road in a two and a half hour demonstration at Peve in protest against government. Well, a report by Abelba says that demonstrators march through the principal streets of Peve amidst drumming, dancing, and chanting war songs. The Irish demonstrators blocked the main Asikuma. Peki, Peve and Hohoi roads, burning tires, preventing vehicular movement on the stretch. <laughs> the youth groups blame the deplorable road networks on the Kufado led government. Various contractors were on most parts of the Eastern Corridor Road prior to the 2016 election. However, the NPP government suspended the contractors for validation, leaving a large stretch of road from Peki through to the northern region in a deplorable state almost unmotorable. Well, let's get on the phone lines now and speak to Roxy Nelson Eche Kwame Dafiamekbo, who is the Member of Parliament for South Dai. Uh, thank you very much, sir. You certainly didn't uh, sanction this lawlessness by the people, did you? No. Hello? Right. Uh, Mr. Dafiamekbo, if you can hear me, my question to you is uh, that you certainly didn't sanction the lawlessness by the people, did you? Hello, I, I can hardly hear your question. So how serious is the state of the road that the residents were demonstrating over? Uh, my brother, the journey of about 10, 15 minutes could take an hour or two. And the roads not just in a deplorable state. Gullies and, and, and small, small valleys are built up on the roads. Uh, when you raise, they collect water and they, they are turning ponds. As I speak to you this afternoon, while the demonstration was ongoing, 
um, a VIP bus that had, uh, was overturned as a result of trying to dodge one of the portals um, at Ajokwe. So the rules in the whole of South Dine, all, all the rules in the whole of South Dine are deplorable state. And indeed, our information is that a lot of the major rules in the Volta region are, are, are in a similar state. So as a people of the region today, we decided to start a series of demonstrations from South Dine to, to, as a way of registering our protestation, um, 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 directed at the government, that the deliberate policy to discontinue to the road projects, particularly in the Volta region, ought to stop. Well, that's fair. That's that's fair, Mr. Dafia Well, that's fair, that's fair to Canadian. register your displeasure. Yeah. But the banning of ties, obviously, is not something that you sanctioned, did you? Sorry? I'm saying that to register your displeasure is fair, but the banning of tyres on the roads was obviously uh, distracting other motorists who were on their you know, daily routine. I, I didn't get the tail end of the question. I was asking that it is indeed legitimate and within your right as individuals to, uh, you know, to protest if you feel very unhappy about the roads. But in the midst of the protest, we saw pictures of some of the residents burning tires on the road. And I'm saying that that does not include your right to demonstrate because obviously you are obstructing other people who are going about their daily routine. Uh, the burning of the tires, well, it's unfortunate, but it is not... It is not a phenomenon that is not associated with open, open, open demonstrations such as this. I have seen it in many, many, many other demonstrations where people come out to burn ties as a way of registering their, their, their displeasure. Now, this government appears to understand the language of only demonstration. And that is what the, the, the people exhibited today. Mm, right. You're a member of parliament. So how are you bringing your influence to bear on this matter that you say quite clearly is impacting on the socioeconomic lives of the residents along the stretch? Yes, I have, I have, I have asked over six questions in respect of the Eastern Corridor alone. I have asked so many other questions in respect of the feeder roads from Todume to Tu to Germany, for instance, the 21.3 kilometers feeder road that's been abandoned. I've asked questions about the, the Quebec, Quebec Tonu, Chate, Chibu, Jacquet, to Enum Road that has also been abandoned. What the government will tell you is that they don't have money. If they have money, they'll come and do it. But we, we are sitting in parliament. I have seen colossal sums of money that have been approved for government to undertake group projects in other areas. So we think that the, 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 the decision not to continue with the road projects in the Volta region is a deliberate one, particularly when the government says that he has halted all the road projects and was reviewing them. We are in the third year. No review report has been, has been submitted to anybody. The contractors have also not been paid, and the roads to the have also not been asked to go back to site and continue. So if this policy, if this is not a deliberate policy to continue the project forever, then we don't know what it is. Mm. It's quite fascinating because, I mean, I have used that road a couple of times, the road through Pe uh, Pekin to Ajokwe, through to Peve, and it's quite, you know, a very deplorable road. Are you saying that we're going to throw our hands in despair because it appears that, you know, the party you represent is not in power, so there's absolutely nothing we can do about this? L let me... That is, that is the tragedy of the situation. But let me give you an instance. About, about three weeks ago, uh, a Toyota Ovan had an accident and four persons died. When my attention was drawn to it, I decided to go and seal the portals using normal concrete, cement, cement, chippings, and sand with water to go and, and do that. It, it was out of frustration because, you see, I've approached the Minister for Rules. He's agreed that tentatively, even though the project may not continue now, at least the portals could be sealed to protect the section of the road that, that has the asphalt surfacing. The regional director has done his, 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 his technical work and submitted the bill. Nobody wants to approve that bill so that the, the, the regional highways and his team can come and do and, and, and seal the portals. So I have, I have had to go and do so 
with some of my constituency and branch party executives. That is that is the that is the situation in which we find ourselves in. And yeah, the Mr. people and the people the, the 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 people are fed up. So they think that enough is enough. Mm. Uh, Mr. Dapremo, for I, I really feel sad for, for the situation. I thank you for your time and good to have you on the program. Roxanne Dapremo is the Member of Parliament for South Dyke constituency in the Volta region. You're still watching um, News at 10 live from my news hub here at the Sawin Kandakra. We're going to go for a short break. We'll return with some more stories. Now, three persons arrested on suspicion of possession of firearms and ammunition are led to be targeting the presidency, have been charged with five counts. Well, these include conspiracy to manufacture arms and ammunition without lawful authority and possession of explosive and firearms without lawful excuse. Here's a report by Godfrey Tanam. In his argument, Prosecutor ASP Sylvester Sare told the court the accused persons be remanded into police custody to make it easy for investigators to get access to them. He added since it is the BNI that is leading the investigation, the accused person should be specifically remanded into PNI custody. He told the court family members and the legal team of the accused persons will be given access to interact with them. The pleas of Dr. Frederick Yao Makpam, Dunya Kafui, and Bright Alan Debra were not taken by the court. Meanwhile, according to prosecution, Wan Suli is at large. A member of the legal representative for the accused persons, Victor Kujoga Adaudu, opposed the argument of prosecution, stressing he wanted to know why the plea of his clients were not taken since prosecution has presented a fact sheet and the charges before the court. He argued that it is only the court that has the power to decide whether to remand the accused persons and not prosecution. ASP Asare responded by indicating prosecution had not concluded investigations, reasons why their plea were not taken. The presiding magistrate, Rose Monegiri, said there was no need taking the plea because some of the charges went beyond her jurisdiction. She further stated she appreciated why investigations need to be conducted, but cautioned prosecution she will give her own orders on the agenda if she does not see any changes to that effect. Speaking to the media, Victor Kojoga Adaudu was of the view government has been sensational and questioned why the accused persons were not charged with treason. This is a dilatory matter. Government is really under pressure. The corruption issues every day it's in there and they want some issue to come to divert attention and you know there are a lot of things that will come up as this matter unfolds government released a statement on september indicating a joint security operation led to the retrieval of several arms explosive devices and ammunition from locations in accra and kong baleji in dodowa the case has been adjourned to october 9 godfrey tanam TV3 News, Accra. Now, family of the President of the Third Republic, Dr. Hilali Mann, has accused people who overthrew him of looting state resources. Now, commemorating 40 years of Dr. Hilali Mann's overthrow and death, speakers alleged governments after the Third Republic have failed to pass the credibility test on corruption. Dr. Hila Liman was a president of Ghana from September 24, 1979 to December 31, 1981. Throughout his 27 months rule, Dr. Liman embraced the virtues of morality and eschewed corruption, but he was later ousted by the Provisional National Defense Council, PNDC, led by Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins, after accusing him and his ministers of grand corruption. 21 years after his death, the country is yet to find any proof of the allegations of corruption leveled against him. Men of his ministers, no apprentices, have been found wanting. They were subjected to kangaroo court. He's called me a lawyer, yes. I'm a lawyer. But law is not subject to kangaroo court. Kangaroo court is just about one or two criminals or uh, uh, devious people who have been made to judge you for what you have. You are alleged have, been, have committed. But look at him. Like the writer said, Hila died without taking government's password. Students of the Hila Liman Hall at the University of Ghana have commemorated his death with the aim of drumming support for his legacies to be given attention. In fact, it is an indication 
that the whole um, student front is having it as its paramount interest to promote the image of our former president. And so, in relation with that, we will call on other national bodies as well, and then your media house to give him the needed political exposure he deserves. In the views of Chairman of the People's National Convention, Bernard Mona, successive governments have failed in the fight against corruption, the very reason Hillary Mann was overthrown. All of them and their officials have been tainted, starting from President Jerry Rollins. And today, the situation has gone from bad to worse under President Nana Akufado. It tells you clearly that they have not been able to pass their appointees through the integrity test. And that is why we are having all these difficulties. Former First Lady Fulira Liman said the family has forgiven the executors of the coup. Oh, I don't live in a life of bitterness at all. When I, we meet at function, I shake hands with them because bitterness kills. I don't live. I'm a Christian and I don't live. I've put that in behind me. The Kong Hydroelectric Dam and the Bui Dam are among achievements of Dr. Hila Liman. The family wants equal attention given the legacies of their presidents of the Third Republic. Away from that, the Ghana Health Service has deployed medication to communities in the northeast region where scabies outbreak has left hundreds of people, mostly women and children, with severe skin rashes and severe itching. At least 14 communities in the newly created region have for the past month been battling the strange skin disease, which they initially claimed was a punishment from the gods until sampled blood tests provided pos proof positive of scabies. As at Sunday evening, a pickup truck loaded with medicine arrived in the region for deployment to the 16 communities where the disease had so far been detected. The communities are Dablebuari, Tamboku, Langbinsi, Bauku, Samne, Kasape, Bumbuazio, Namangu, Jawani, Sumni Boma No. 1, Tugbene, Gazare Dangtanga, Kurgu and Zoglugu. TV3 on September 14th reported the outbreak of a strange skin disease in the Dabolibari community in the Gambaga municipality, which had affected at least five persons in each household of the community, which has about 200 households. Arocha Ghana, an environmental conservation organization, has described the comments by President Akufuado on the deportation of Aisha Huan, as unfortunate, the Deputy National Director of Arocha Ghana, Daryl Boso, explained that it was a huge blow to stakeholders leading to the fight against illegal mining in Ghana. President Nana Adodankwa Akufuado, in response to a question from a Ghanaian resident in the United States at the Princeton University Forum, said, The government's decision to deport Chinese national Aisha Huan who was facing prosecution for illegal mining operations, was a mistake. I think the decision that was made to deport the Aisha on hindsight was a mistake. But the Deputy National Director of Arusha Ghana said the statement was a disappointment. This is one of the most unfortunate statements anyone could make, particularly also somebody in a position as a president. He is a person who is leading the fight because as our head of state, he made a commitment to fight it and we've been rallying behind him. It's more like for us, we see it as a stab in the back because we've all been doing this together. In May 2017, Aisha Wang gained notoriety in Ghana when she was charged with three counts of undertaking small-scale mining operations contrary to Section 99.1 of the Minerals and Mining Act 2006, Act 703 providing mining support services without valid registration with the Minerals Commission and the illegal employment of foreign nationals contrary to the Immigration Act 2000, Act 573. Aisha Wang represented that symbolic icon of the Chinese influence within the mining sector in this country. And as we know, 
most Ghanaians before the Chinese came in with the equipment and all of that were doing artisanal mining. The Chinese really spared this mining on from something more of a, an, an, an artisanal activity to more of a machine um, influenced activity which was leading to significant degradation of our water bodies and also of our land. We also saw how a lot of ministers of state defended the, the actions that the government took in relation to this Asha One's case, and even the going to court and the AG also um, f filing a nolly procedure. The Chinese national who was facing prosecution for her crimes was controversially deported to her home country at the height of the fight against Galamse. The decision to deport her without trial took many Ghanaians by surprise. Other civil society organizations like Occupy Ghana have also condemned the decision, stating it took government too long to concede the move was a mistake. On that note, we conclude news at 10. It came to you live from our news hub here at Adesawe in Kandakra. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Parkus Yasari. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com.